G'day, Bob the Science Master here. Welcome to my little apiary. My first honey flow is happening today, and that's why I'm making this video. Well, let's have a little look around first. Down here, I have the foundations for my new beehive stand. One there. One there. I'll put together a video as it uh, progresses over here and have a little solar panel not working today because it's overcast and it runs a little pump and that provides water for the bees here's the flow hive I've bodged it up a little stand and have it clamped in place and a few jars ready for the flow there are three flow frames in the centre, and either side there are two laying troughs. I'm going to take those laying troughs out and have a look at the flow frame, firstly the one on the left, to see if it's capped enough to harvest. Here's the right hand side of the box. Let's open it up and have a look at what's inside. The girls are keeping themselves busy building honeycomb. We might be able to take a peek at the next frame inside. Here it is, dark and covered with bees, but it's actually full of nectar as well. I hope that's a good sign. I've suited up, but I've taken my gloves off so I can use this iPad. Here's the left hand flow frame and it's pretty well capped in the middle but I notice towards the bottom and towards the back that's not so well capped. Here's the Langstroth frames and it's a bit of a mixture as well. Capped, open um, nectar and empty frames. Right at the bottom was braced to the um, the box below so now there's a whole lot of honey that the girls are cleaning up. Right down on the bottom of the box is where the honey has been spilt. There's certainly a lot of bees in this hive. Hello again. I've got my flow hive open we're ready to pour. Here's a little outlet. There's this little tang that needs to go on the bottom. It's never been installed before, so let's see if I can get it right. It looks pretty easy. Here's jar number one. I've numbered all the jars because I'm going to start at the front of the flow frame and work my way back. How long till the first flow? All right, I'll slide this all the way in the bottom holes, just so I know how far it'll go. Right, that's all the way to the back, but I don't want to go all the way to the back. I want to go about a third of the way. So I think that's about a third of the way. And now I turn crank gently and it should be open. Now we wait. I can see that beautiful honey dripping down. Soon it'll be flowing out. Here it comes. You want to come a bit closer? sure the bees won't mind. It's flowing nice and slowly. Hopefully that means it's viscous. Hopefully that means it's um, ripe. At least some of the um, cells at this end weren't capped. Most of the cells in the middle are capped and we'll test the honey as we go. 
Almost there. And here it comes. The first flow of honey. It's beautiful. All right, we're going to start jar number two. We're still on the first third. Let's get the lid on. Got one V very interested in what's happening. And we didn't time it, but I think it was probably only took about three or four minutes to fill that, um, that jar. Jar number three ready. We won't bore ourselves by showing each jar getting started. The channel is absolutely full. Now, that means we could have the overflow problem that some people have talked about. But because we're only emptying one third of the frame, that should be less of an issue. I hope so, in any case. Yes, please. Now, right, the flow is still coming, but it's definitely slowed down. So I'm going to move the um, cranks back and open the next third. This is the central third, the third that I thought was most capped. So move it back, crank it open. When I built this um, little apiary, I had my rails level, but because we're on the top of a slope, I have a feeling that it might have slowly tilted downhill. Now this looks like it sloped the wrong way. If it is, then that's something I'm going to have to remedy when I build my new set of rails. We're nearly ready for jar number four. And we're also nearly ready to crank open the rest of the frame. Oh, now ready to crank open the um, last of the cells. I think there's no reason why we'd have to crank them open. If I had enough honey and I didn't want to rob any more, I see no reason why I couldn't leave this third closed. But in fact, I do want the rest of the honey. So I'm going to crank it open now, nice and gently. Very handy having two of the hive tools. Underneath, I've got a core fleet board and it has some diatomite to hopefully put paid to any hive beetles. Now we're going to have a look at that and look for honey. There's a little bit of honey. A little bit of honey there, which people have been noticing, and some hive beetles, one of which is still alive, and a little um, moth, a wax moth. There's a dead wax moth. One live beetle, which won't be live for much longer. Now, some of this honey is going to have come from the um, comb that I broke when I took the... Uh, took the lamb trough frames out. But I suspect a little of it has overflowed as well. And I also suspect the reason, or one reason, is that I have the slope going the wrong way. See how the honey's accumulated at the front? That to me says there's a slight tilt towards the front and that's not going to be helping the honey to flow out the back. All right, let's put it back. We'll give this a wash sometime so the bees aren't attracted down. So I don't expect bees like being with the um, um, with the diatomite. Okay. One of my chooks is here for a visit. Well, my little apiary was in danger of falling down the slope. So my flow hive extraction did me one very big favour. I'll move up a bit closer so we can see how far I've moved this big post.
two or three centimetres, I'd say. This is Crocodile Dundee, my spirit level. Let's see how it's working. Perfecto. Here's jar number six, filling nicely. Unfortunately, not so with some of the other jars. I was distracted with the work and had a couple of little overflows. Not too much though. Here's the little channel blowing how it's supposed to be. I've moved Crocodile Dundee up on top of the flow hive. Let's see what the bubble's doing. Perfect. See how much I need to lift it to level it up. Not very much at all. Let's put it on top of this little button. It's pretty good. There's an idea of the slope. Good enough. Jar number six is filling nicely. Time for jar number seven. <laughs> 